Today I ventured into the deepest and most forgotten corners of the forest, where water lies stagnant, dark, and filled with unseen life, with the intention of finding, collecting, and showing you some of the strangest and most fascinating creatures hidden beneath its silent surface. Once my mission was complete, the next step was inevitable. Those strange aquatic creatures became part of the natural cycle, transformed into food, offering my pets a feast as unusual as it was nutritious. It seems the juicy morsel has been received with complete satisfaction. But don't worry because I collected plenty of aquatic larvae, more than enough to create a small ecosystem and observe up close a strange behavior that I am about to reveal to you. Suddenly a challenge arose at the start of the experiment. The water was too murky due to the large amount of suspended clay particles which slow down their settling. Even so, it was possible to make out something moving inside. I decided to toss a small toy into the jar to watch it progressively as the water cleared. On the surface, the larvae moved through the murky water, creating an unsettling scene, swimming in a thick brown soup. I had no choice but to tightly seal the jar to prevent anything from escaping and wait until the next day hoping that the soil and the water had settled enough to film these creatures in greater detail. In the morning, to my dismay, the water was still murky, although I could now make out its contents more clearly. At first glance, mosquito larvae were visible, known as bloodworms, coronamid larvae, tiny organisms that live in sediments rich in organic matter. Their red color comes from hemoglobin, which allows them to survive in low oxygen water, and their undulating movements make them look like miniature snakes. These larvae could remain buried in the mud for months, enduring low oxygen levels and waiting for more favorable conditions to move. But they were not the only inhabitants of the jar. They were also joined by these tiny sac-like creatures that resemble cells known as cladocherans. By the third day, I could observe everything more clearly. Most of the mosquito larvae were at the bottom of the jar, busy burrowing tunnels in the soil and embedding themselves in the mud a behavior that allows them to stay protected and access nutrients from the sediment. However, the cladostrans remain continuously swimming or suspended in the water, motionless, never touching the bottom. These small crustaceans, known as water fleas, are part of freshwater plankton and feed by filtering tiny particles of organic matter from the water. Interestingly, they possess a single compound eye that allows them to perceive changes in light and detect movements around them, helping them react quickly and evade potential predators, demonstrating a remarkable level of adaptation for their size. Both creatures reminded me of the countless times I had drunk water from streams and springs in the countryside, unaware of everything it might contain. There was a large number of cladostrans constantly moving in the water. Interestingly, besides reproducing asexually for much of the year, these tiny creatures can produce resistant eggs that survive long periods in adverse conditions, thus ensuring the continuity of the species. A single cladocerin can produce hundreds of offspring throughout its life, and under favorable conditions, their population can grow rapidly within just a few days. The bodies of these tiny larvae are segmented and covered with a flexible cuticle that allows them to move with almost hypnotic undulations, gliding through mud and sediment like tiny snakes. These movements help them burrow tunnels, explore the sediment for food, and avoid predators with remarkable efficiency. Their characteristic red color comes from hemoglobin, allowing them to survive in low oxygen areas, and they possess specialized structures that enable them to filter microscopic particles of organic matter, as well as remain suspended in the water when needed. During their larval stage, they focus on growing and storing reserves, perfecting these survival skills, while reproduction occurs when they transform into adult mosquitoes of the genus Coronimus, completely harmless. Unlike common mosquito larvae, which swim near the surface and rely on atmospheric oxygen, these bloodworms are adapted to live buried or suspended in the water, displaying efficient, resilient, and fascinating behavior that makes them truly extraordinary creatures. Suddenly, another creature appeared, a strange white worm that remained completely still. I wasn't sure whether it was some kind of parasite or another larva, but I had never seen it before. In these stagnant waters, 
So many creatures live depending on the time of year that at times it is difficult to identify them accurately. Bloodworms have specialized sensory structures called chemoreceptors, which allow them to detect chemical changes in the water and locate food sources even in complete darkness. Additionally, their feeding activity contributes to aerating and mixing the sediment, promoting the decomposition of organic matter and helping maintain the balance of the aquatic ecosystem. Some populations exhibit cooperative behaviors, temporarily grouping in shared tunnels to optimize nutrient searching. Interestingly, during their development, these worms can store compounds that later influence the resilience and fertility of adult mosquitoes of the genus Coronimus, into which they eventually transform, a detail that shows how each stage of their life is intricately connected to the next. The larvae seemed remarkably at ease in this microhabitat, truly otherworldly creatures, and after several days of observation, I was finally able to see clearly the toy I had placed at the bottom, emerging from the sediment like a small observer of all the activity happening around it. Coronamid larvae are not only abundant in nearly every stagnant body of water on the planet, with over 15,000 different species described in the family Coronamidae, many exhibiting colors beyond deep red, including shades of yellow, blue, green, or purple, depending on the species. But they also display a remarkable diversity of feeding habits, consuming not only fine organic matter, but also algae, fragments of submerged plants, and even small invertebrates like benthic rotifers, making them versatile consumers within their environment. Some marine chironomids have even been recorded associated with coral communities, showing that these insects can adapt to far more diverse habitats than their appearance suggests. Moreover, adult mosquitoes of the genus Coronimus are known to form mass synchronized swarms, a phenomenon that can bring together thousands of individuals flying at once. A spectacle that, while impressive, poses no health risk because they do not bite or feed on blood like common mosquitoes. The transformation of the larva is a fascinating process. It begins as a tiny worm that slowly grows, adapting to aquatic life. After several weeks, its metabolism reorganizes, internal organs reshape, and it enters the pupil stage, a period of stillness and restructuring in which every cell seems to fulfill a predetermined role. Finally, it emerges from the water as an adult mosquito of the genus Chironomus, with delicate wings and entirely different movements, ready to play its role in the ecological cycle. This silent journey of life, from the invisible to the visible, reminds us that even the smallest and most unnoticed transformations can hold the magnitude of a total change.